To say that tonight's show is going to be great is an understatement. We have a fantastic guest tonight uh, to introduce to you. Uh, she is an award-winning filmmaker, a producer, and chi energy educator. Guys, you can't miss the show, Steve, right? Where you are, we'll be right back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rob's Inner Circle here in the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. As I said, we have a magnificent show for you guys tonight. Actually, the show tonight is going to be kicking off our October series entitled The COVID Party Month. And uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, in this series some guests coming on that used COVID to their advantage. They came out of the box. They did some interesting things, and they're going to be coming on to our show to be sharing that with us. A quick mention that next week's guest is going to be Alexander Richard Strauss Fausto, and uh, he's going to be uh, joining uh, our, uh, our podcast as well. So he's going to be bringing some interesting things as well. An important thing I have to do, I have to get this off my chest, guys. Uh, if this show is as good as it is, there's only one reason why. I have someone wonderful working with me, my good friend and producer of Rob's Inner Circle, Miss Jenny Duhame. Jenny, all the credit comes to you. Thank you very much for being there. You're doing such an exceptional job. So, hey, let's keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> And also an honorable mention uh, to all of my castmates on Daily Struggles, the much-awaited episode five will be coming out tomorrow, premiering at 5.30, both on uh, Facebook and our channel, Bobby's Short Shorts. So you guys don't want to miss that either. We have um, the wonderful uh, Patty Saragosa, who uh, has been on the show uh, since uh, day one. She's do doing a great job, as usual. And we got Jenny Duhame, the producer of our show, is making her debut on the show, and she's teaming up with Art LaDuke. And that's going to be pretty interesting. So, guys, you don't want to miss that. And uh, besides all that, let's see. Let's make sure we have everything covered over here. Yes, guys, you want to come on to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel? Come on and come and like uh, our productions. Uh, come and leave us our uh, comments. Uh, you guys want to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Okay, guys? Now, guys, we got something important to do. We do this every week, and this is no exception. This is in the honor of our guests, okay, guys? So, guys, you want to slip into your pajamas, right? You want to cool off. Make sure you have that nice glass of wine with you, okay? Right. So, you guys want to kick back over here like this, relax, <laughs> and let us carry the load. Don't worry about it. Oh, my God, we got an exciting guest back there at home. Backstage, look at her. She's so excited. Don't worry. We're going to come and get you in a couple of seconds. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, my God. Okay, guys, get ready for an exciting show, okay? I don't know about you guys. I know about one thing. I know about myself. I'm ready to go. Guys, it's showtime. Let's do this. So let's bring in our guest, ladies and gentlemen. As we introduced at the beginning of the show, she's a film producer. She's a, a chi. Uh, she energy educator. She's a lot of things, guys. She's absolutely fantastic. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Patricia Chica. Patricia, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Rob and Jenny, for inviting me. What an honor. I love your show. I've been watching uh, episodes uh, from fellow colleagues and friends and uh, wonderful people. And I love how you bring the conversations and with the flow and it's always interesting and informative educational so thank you for having me here tonight well it's our profound pleasure and honor thank you very much patricia you have so many things to say so patricia you know uh we're ready to go so we're gonna do one thing let's get it on yes okay. and hello miriam hello teresa lovely actresses from montreal yes representing so <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. So uh, tell me, uh, Patricia, you just finished uh, filming um, Montreal Girls. So when is this uh, going to be coming out? 
Yes, I have one more day to, to go on Montreal Girls. Uh, it's coming out in 2021, next year. Uh, it's a theatrical feature film, dramatic uh, coming of age story. So I'm excited to bring this to the world after nine years of development. Uh, it's been a long journey for me and my uh, co-writing partner, Kamal John Iskander and the producers at Objective Nine. Uh, we've been uh, around the block many, many times. And you know, they say uh, take rejections as a badge of honor because we were rejected for many years with the script. Uh, I always believe this story deserves to be told and uh, it's never a match until you get it right with the right partners. And that's what I've learned in this process. So the film is coming out next year and post-production starts, uh, very exciting times. So tell us a little bit, uh, Patricia, there's something uh, uh, spectacular happened is because the lead actor, there's something peculiar. I mean, uh, he had no experience whatsoever, but he did something extremely courageous. So I'm going to let you share that with our audience. Yes, I was looking for uh, the, the actor who would play the lead, a young Middle Eastern actor in his early 20s. And we went on a wide search casting call all across the country, even in North America, in the Middle East. Uh, for many years, we had one of the top rising stars of Egypt, uh, Ahmed Malik, attached. But once we were able to fund the film with all the uh, regulations in Canada to respect points, etc., we lost our Egyptian star. So uh, within a week, I had to replace him with somebody local. And we went, uh, I searched everywhere for every Middle Eastern young man I could find, actor or not. And um, I, it, it got to the point where I became discouraged because I, I thought my film production was at stake. If I don't find the lead actor, is the movie going to die here? Because it has to be good, you know? <clears throat> and there was a one point uh, where, um, I found this young actor, uh, Hakim Brahimi, remember this name. And actually he wasn't a, an actor. He was working at uh, CIBC Bank uh, to become an engineer uh, studying at Concordia University. And uh, I told my assistant, Sophia, just look him up and find him, uh, ask him to put himself on tape. And Sophia found him on Instagram and wrote to him on Instagram and said, you have 24 hours, 48 max to put yourself on tape because we're so desperate to find our lead actor. We, we're, we will start production soon. And he just sent a tape and it was pretty obvious he wasn't a, a trained actor, but the charisma was there, the, uh, the energy was there. And the next day I met him uh, as a callback uh, myself in person in an audition room. And I just knew, uh, I told him, I told Hakim, I said, if I cast you to play the lead actor in a movie, a feature film where you are in every single scene, this is like a very complex role. You have to commit to get training. And unless I, I don't have that commitment from you, there's no way I can work with you. And he committed to it. He said, I commit. And for a, a director, a, a coach like me, it, it's so important to observe that an actor has that uh, teachability index. Uh, the actor has to be willing to be guided, to, to absorb, to learn, to educate himself at different levels. And Hakim had like a very high uh, teachable index. So my trust uh, was there. And I told him, I cannot confirm your cast. You know, I still had to approve him with the producers, the distributor, et cetera. Uh, and don't quit your job because uh, if you commit to become a leading actor in the film, you have to really uh, do this full time. You cannot just uh, do it part time. And he went on and quit his job before I could announce that wow. the role. He, he believed in it so much. And that really surprised me. Uh, but it was so worth it because uh, um, we worked together for a year, for a full year, 
to get him ready for uh, the role of uh, Rami in Montreal Girls. And he did all the coaching of Chi Energy possible, uh, you know, to become that character. And it, it's so profound, the performance he gave was so intuitive and so right for the role. I was myself impressed to the point of being teary sometimes behind the monitor when I could observe all the journey he went through to become that character. So you uh, you said you have uh, some actors cast from all over Canada there. You have quite a big cast on uh, Montreal Girls. We have a large cast, over 20 uh, actors, uh, a lot of uh, secondary roles, extras, etc. cetera. Uh, I have, uh, you know, for me, casting is, it has to be right. It has to be the right energy. Uh, the commitment of the actor is so important to me. And uh, I spent four and a half years on my own looking for those actors. And then wow. we worked with the wonderful team at uh, Bruno Rosado Casting who helped us uh, complete the callbacks and things like that. But it was a, a long journey for me, a heartbreaking journey to discover so many talents and discover myself throughout the process as well, discover my characters throughout the process. And it's something that I, I always believed that it had to be accurate, it had to be authentic. I didn't want to cast peoples from different cultures playing uh, Arabs and Middle Eastern people, etc. I, I wanted uh, the Quebecois actors to be full on Quebecois with the accent and those who were Anglos to be Anglos from Montreal, Middle Easterns to be real Middle Eastern Arab um, characters. A and this is uh, what makes a movie really real and authentic. Oh, so uh, what other films have you worked on, uh, Patricia? <laughs> I have worked, oh, oh my God, over a hundred productions in my career. I stopped counting. Uh, I worked on television for many years as a series producer and director uh, when I was living in New York. Uh, also in LA, I worked as a producer for a TV show. Uh, it's not something I publicize because it's work for hire, you know, I have to pay the bills like everybody else. But my personal work is mostly in short films uh, previously, award-winning shorts that went around the world. Uh, I work in genre, in drama, comedy. Uh, Montreal Girls is a labor of love. It's something that I've been developing with Kamal uh, for many years, and it's something that has my full-on stamp on it. It's actually the first feature film ever produced in history with the Chi Energy Method and the mindset behind uh, what I educate with. And uh, all my, my intentions are put in, into that film. It's very personal. So can you tell us exactly, we hear a lot about the Qi energy. What is Qi energy exactly? Uh, qi energy, uh, it's be becoming aware to work with energy and the loss of nature. And it it's to switch your mindset as an artist, as a storyteller, as an actor, filmmaker, entrepreneur, anyone, to uh, work in cooperation with those energies and the laws that exist and apply to anyone. And for me, that is uh, the key, is to be expanded working with energies, working with uh, psychology, with uh, neuroscience and discoveries that uh, we are learning. And it's not something that is taught in film school or in acting school. So my intention is to be uh, a pioneer bridging the gap between storytelling, performance, and uh, filmmaking is to uh, work with nature and how to bring the knowledge, with the wisdom of nature within storytelling. And I have been studying with different masters throughout the years, educating myself and also uh, experimenting on myself and my students on my film sets. And, and now uh, I, have be, I was very fortunate enough to be able to teach the basis of the method to my cast and crew uh, just before production started on Montreal Girls. Uh, we rented a yoga studio and the cast and crew, even the producers came, assistant director, everyone was there to uh, share that uh, common knowledge of how can we 
collaborate with nature, with those laws, with mindset, with psychology, with energy, uh, to co-create co this story in harmony with all the elements that are available to us. And it, it just creates, it sets the tone to work in a very harmonious uh, flow. It's not always possible when you work with different people under pressure, you know, there's a lot of money at stake and you're running out of time and problems arise on set all the time. It's inevitable. But once the, the cast and crew are aware of how to manage those energies, it just makes the collaboration better and more harmonious. We, we were talking before the show came on, uh, Patricia, you were saying uh, with the audience, interacting with the audience tonight somehow, if there's something that, uh, what was it exactly that you told me? So I, I just want to get this right. Well, uh, uh, I'm very open. If you in the audience have questions about any struggle you're going through or a situation you're, you want to solve, uh, related to filmmaking, storytelling, or performance, to do a little exercise with you on camera. And energy transcends the digital world, so I'm willing to work with you and bring in um, any type of help, support, or solutions to you. Folks, this is an invitation. This is happening right now. If you guys want to do this with Patricia, don't be shy. We won't say your name. Don't be shy. You can come on and uh, we can have a, a lot of fun with this exercise. If nobody's going to do it, I'm going to volunteer. Okay. Okay. Let's give them a chance, see if these if people pop up over here. In the meantime. And, and just tell us where you're you're coming in from. I love to know what city, where you're tuning in from. It's uh, Am I able to read what people are writing? Or uh, Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, we got Miriam's. Uh, you Miriam. see that? Yes, okay. of course, Miriam, lovely. She was on set with uh, with us on Montreal. With Montreal Girls, yeah, I'm yes. aware of that. She yes. had a lot of fun, she told me. Yes. And then you got also, uh, here we are. Patty, hi, Patty. Yes, the so, Patties. <laughs> okay, so nobody's going to volunteer over here. Nobody's going to ask uh, Patricia to, to help you out with something. No? Going once? They, they, they'll come back later. Oh, oh, hang on a sec. Okay. We got Eunice Halverson from Ottawa. Oh, hello, Eunice. Thank you for tuning in, Eunice. Then we got uh, Mark St. Marie. He's from... Uh, oh, hello, Mark. Oh, you know him, right? Yes, great, great. Uh, he came to a few workshops, so uh, very happy to have him on the show. Okay, guys. So, listen, I'm going to ask Patricia another question over here. Give you guys some time to muster up that question over here. Come on. So, Patricia, can you repeat to them exactly what it is that he can do with you? Uh, anything related to energy. If you have any questions, blockages uh, relating to uh, your energy, I'm happy to answer any questions. Guys, this is your last chance. I'm going to ask you a question. You don't do it, I'm going to do it. Okay. Maybe you can tell them what we did with your throat just before the show. Okay. You know what? That's it. Let's do it. Okay, guys. I Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time on the phone today. Lots of things happening in the production world. I also have a life out of uh, Rob's Inner Circle. As you all know, I'm in the movie business myself. And I spent a lot of time on the phone. And my throat was about to give up on me. Guys, I swear to God, this is not a joke. Patricia immediately caught up on that. She And she invited me to the chakra over here, the throat chakra. She invited me to do this. And it's like something uh, with a flow of energy. And it's amazing what it did. She invited me to do that in the back of the head as well. Guys, it's amazing. You guys are missing out. It's, it, you know, it's your loss. You don't ask her any questions. It's your loss. It's okay. Patricia, did you want to show us uh, maybe some pictures or a little presentation, a video or something? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to explain how uh, when we become aware of energy and we work with our intention to be of service. So for the actor, for the storyteller, the artist, it's not about you, what you do. And, and once you understand that, everything will flow with ease, with grace, with results. I was myself always thinking about me. And as I mentioned before, for nine years of development of Montreal Girls, I was pitching the project everywhere. Uh, my co-writer, Kamal, was pitching 
And what I understood is that I was there to serve me. I want money for my film. I want people to support me. And it was all about my ego. And the moment I understood that it wasn't about me is when things started to become uh, real. And we started getting the film financed and people attached. And, and, and how to, to work with your energies, it, it comes from the solar plexus, uh, the ego. So if you remove yourself from that center and just align to the crown, which is on top of the head, and you say, I'm here to serve a higher purpose than myself with this story. This story deserves to be told. This story will entertain and inspire and empower audiences worldwide. Uh, this story will benefit everyone involved, the cast and the crew. You become... Uh, you you start transcending to a higher result because it's, it's you, you attract more people and the right people and you make them excited about joining venture with you. And I hear so many times filmmakers telling me, yeah, but I never get funded by the institutions. No one believes in me or I don't have money to support me or investors or whatever. It's because they are still in the ego phase. And they, they haven't understood that to get the funding, you have to match exactly what the funders want. And there has to be a match and alignment. And that comes from the frequency alignment. You project who you are through vibration, through energy. So the moment you elevate your vibration to match theirs, this is, it's like the antennas of a radio station, you know? You can tune in and then you become a magnet of exactly the people you want to collaborate with. Uh, Patricia, did you have a video or two uh, to show? Uh, I have a video of, uh, should I show the video I, I, of uh, the screen? Is sure, that, uh, go ahead. Three minutes long. Uh, this is when I discovered that I had a gift working with energy. Uh, I have had this gift since I was born. Uh, I'm a clairvoyant and clairsentient myself, uh, but I, I wasn't aware of it. I just knew it was my reality, my standard. And then the, the excerpt that I want to show you is when I was filming a short film called Ceramic Tango. And uh, during the rehearsals, there was always a behind the scene camera filming uh, the rehearsals. And in, just to put you into context, I was working with two non-actors. Uh, one of them, his name is Holy Scar. He was playing the lead. And one of the scenes, he had to scream. And he couldn't even put volume in his voice to scream during rehearsals. There was a huge emotional, energetic blockage at the chest uh, area. And I pick, pick up on that during the rehearsal. And my hands just went to follow him. So I, I will show you what happened and how uh, working with energy was uh, of support of the actor. So this is um, the behind the scenes video of Ceramic Tangle. It's called Let It Out. And it's nice. available on my uh, Vimeo channel for free if you want to watch the whole documentary. So I'm just looking for uh, the excerpt here. Folks, this is going to be amazing. I, I saw this before we came on air. It's absolutely breathtaking. Just watch, you guys are gonna freak. Okay, so I'm gonna share it now. Here we go. Do you see the full screen? No, we don't see the screen yet. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned in tonight to Rob's Inner Circle. Our guest uh, is Patricia Chica. She's an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and a chi energy educators okay here we go we have the uh, clip ready to go okay so i'm just gonna uh, make sure okay we're getting closer to the shooting dates and i feel that oh, i have to go further 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 holy has a blockage in this area of his chest. I saw Holy struggling to play the scene. Let me first, let me first. He's waking up, he's waking up. 
from this nightmare. There's a point where I feel that he's not able to scream. I was filming. Suddenly, I give the camera to Richard and I said, keep rolling. And I don't know why, but my hands felt an attraction towards his body, his chest. And I'm pushing with all my force like this. I'm pushing and I cannot reach his skin. Patricia is very good. She does not know this. She is a healer. She doesn't really know what she's doing, but she's able to play with energy to repair maybe where there's cold or aches or pains or just a tool to let go of an emotion. And then I start looking at Holy's eyes and I see that he starts not blinking, but just tears start rolling. On a fini par débloquer ma carapace. The energy started to become very soft, very soft, that my hands were able to touch. such a relief like calmness like we felt calm i don't even speak i go back to richard pick up the camera and say richard go and make him scream 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 let it out let it out you know he wants to scream but he can't help him to scream but uh, I got to confess that at first, uh, you know, while I was trying to find a way to make him scream and having Patricia ordering me to like, you know, make him scream, make him scream. Scream. Oh, my, that's so scary. Richard un peu devenu comme ma propre voix intérieure où est-ce que j'essaie de me, me remémorer des choses qui pouvaient faire en sorte que j'ai envie de crier, de me laisser aller là-dessus. Puis à chaque fois, il y a une partie de moi aussi qui avait le contrôle de vouloir dire « Non, fais pas ça, non, c'est ta, ta barrière que t'essaies de mettre depuis toujours. » I want you to scream right now. Let it out. Scream, scream, scream. Scream, cry, scream, let it out. Le cri qui en est ressorti a été un, vraiment un très grand soulagement parce que c'est des choses qui s'accumulaient de, depuis vraiment comme mon enfance, puis vraiment plus loin. Puis ça a vraiment été de faire le vide, puis je me suis senti comme quelqu'un de nouveau après. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> so that was behind the scenes, and uh, uh, that was a rehearsal. Before a you rehearsal. Guys and uh, I could observe in Holy Scar a transformation after that rehearsal. He, he was empowered and more confident and free, liberated from uh, traumas from his childhood. And this is what uh, Chi Energy does. It really helps uh, support the actor, the performer, to support the story because I'm there to serve the cast. I'm there to serve the story, to serve the team and not just make it about me. And I discovered a, a gift when we presented the film uh, at, the, at the premiere, uh, someone came to me and asked me if I was uh, a Reiki master. And I didn't even know what Reiki was back then. So I had to Google the word the next day. And I became aware that I have been doing that all my life with actors since I was in film school. Uh, I always been, uh, practicing energy and now I can educate people. I have received training, I have received uh, information, I have a curriculum, I have a structure to it that I can teach and uh, science behind it that I, I've studied to explain it better than just me saying I feel something in my hands, you know, uh, like I used to in the past. Patricia, I have something very important to do right now. Where's your cup, Patricia? You <laughs> so deserve this. 
All the best to you, Patricia, to all your endeavors. Salud. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Patricia, tell us, um, you came to Canada at a young age. So originally, where are you from? I was born in El Salvador, uh, in Central America. And my parents uh, had to escape during the Civil War. So I entered the country as a war refugee uh, when I was very little. So um, this is where, where I come from. Excellent. So um, we were talking in our interview that we had last week. Um, you were saying that at a very young age, you knew exactly that you wanted to go into this kind of business. You were doing some drawings outside at one point. Yes. This is back in El Salvador. In El and, you, and you got a little upset. What happened? What happened? Uh, I remember when I was four years old, I was in the backyard uh, drawing on a piece of paper with uh, Crayolas. And it was getting dark, you know, I spent the whole afternoon drawing and creating stories. And I remember even the drawings I was uh, doing at four, I, re I still remember them. And uh, somebody came to me and said, it's getting dark, you have to come in. And they just took the, the piece of paper and my Crayola out of my hands. And I remember I started screaming and crying, crying, because uh, how dare you take away this from me? I'm in my zone. And I was so upset as a four-year-old girl. And I remember at that instant moment, it was so clear to me, no one, when I grow older, is going to take this away from me. No one. And, and, and I knew this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, is to be creative, to express myself, to tell stories. And I never looked back, you know? Okay, and you're telling me that uh, oh, th this this amazed me. And uh, I, I've understood this. I apply this in my life as much as I can. I'm not a master at it. What happens is that we are programmed, educated as kids, okay, to to listen to our logic, to listen to our brain. But in reality, we have to listen to our intuition. And you were talking to me about three brains that have to be aligned. This is interesting. Can you share this with us? Uh, the, each person, you over there, have, you have three brains. We all do. And those three brains have to be aligned and you have to uh, be able to detect the information that th those three brains send to you because they have wisdom and they have knowledge and guidance. And most people walk through life doing this. They're on their phones, they're minding their own business, they're in their head, uh, and they're not listening to the wisdom of the three brains. So the three brains are the following. If you are going through a dilemma, and this is where I can do a little exercise. Sure, by all means. For, for everyone listening. So if you could think right now of a challenge you're going through today in the present moment, a challenge you have to make a decision, you have to move forward with a project or with a relationship or something. So type yes if you can uh, voice that, if you can identify that. And, and I like to see the feedback from the audience because energy goes through. I, I need to feel your energy so I can be of service to you more. Come on, folks, this is your chance to participate. Patricia is here. We're, we're here to have fun. And it's it's the instructional at the same time. So don't be shy, guys. I Look, I I, uh, I led the way. I typed yes myself. So come on, guys. Don't be shy. Come and participate. So, Rob, you typed yes. So uh, There we go. We got it. Hey, look at this. Yes, that, Jenny. Uh, Perfect. We got another one. Mara. And another one. And another one. Three. And another one. Oh, my God. Oh, good stuff, guys. Good Three stuff. People. So uh, for you, Rob, think of a challenge, a struggle, uh, a dilemma you're going through, and the three brains will give you the answer. I have to do this right now? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, Teresa. Okay, I got it. So just sit down and take a deep breath. <sighs> and exhale through the mouth to cleanse yourself, to come back to the present moment. And ask your first brain, is the solar plexus, is your gut feeling? 
touch your, your belly with your hand and ask your body, is it a yes or a no? Do you feel good or bad about this situation? You're telling me the situation, I mean, itself? Or the question you have. Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's a little scary, but you know what? I'm going to go with my intuition. Yes. Okay. And you see, you went back to your brain. You weren't in your intuition. You went to your brain, and I could see it in your eyes. So ask your body. Remove your intuition. Your intuition is not invited to make this decision right now. You just go to your body, your gut feeling, your solar plexus, touch it, and ask, it. do I feel good or bad about it? I feel good about it. Okay. And now you're going to ask your intuition. So put your hand over there. And the first impression you get is the right one. Don't overthink it. Don't question it. Is it a yes or a no? Is it good or bad? It's a huge screaming yes. <laughs> okay. That's very good. And then touch your heart. That's the third brain, your okay. heart. And ask your heart only, is it a yes or a no? Is it good or bad? How do you feel, good or bad? I feel overwhelmed like, with some, a, a big sudden warmth around me. Uh, I think it's a yes. It's so aligned. You see your three brains wow. from three different perspectives gave you an answer. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, most people, they will say the re they will go to their brain, not their third eye intuition. They will say, yeah, but I'm getting paid more. It's a great opportunity. Uh, but it's not aligned because they don't get along with the person they are about to join venture with. They're not feeling it's the right thing. And you have to be fully aligned, find the three yeses. And if you want to go even further, you can ask above yourself, your higher power, higher energy, divine Call it God, call it Allah, call it uh, the spirit, call it your guidance, your guides, your an ancestors. Whatever that is, is the same energy that's beyond you. You can ask that observational uh, energy, how does it feel from a detached perspective? And so, Patricia, you offer some classes and I put up your website here at the, the bottom of the screen. Can you tell our audience exactly what kind of classes do you offer and what kind of packages you have? Yes, uh, we uh, I offer classes, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching to actors, filmmakers, storytellers, people in the industry of film and television, entertainment at large. Uh, there are workshops that I give in person, not during the pandemic. Uh, I give them online now through Zoom. And uh, it's different topics. It, it goes from working with uh, the different energies to uh, mindset psychology to um, uh, strategies for uh, publicity, strategies for how to uh, present yourself, speak publicly, how to uh, manage your stress. And it's all related to be of service to storytelling and performance. So that's really what I bring as a niche uh, market, as a niche service that is not being offered uh, that I'm aware anywhere else. Uh, I bring in a lot of uh, different disciplines from uh, yoga to energy healing, to Reiki, to uh, role play, to uh, performance, um, uh, psychology, neuroscience, uh, PR, all of the things that I, I, I know and that I have studied. And of course, storytelling is always at the center of everything that I do. You know something, Patricia? I drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, thank you for such a beautiful show tonight. It's my pleasure. I'll be honest with you. Um, I am so happy with the amount of particip participation from the audience. I thank you all uh, for participating. Patricia is an, an exceptional guest. Um, guys, you do want to take advantage of all the services that she gives. Do go visit her website. And this is going to transform your life. She's absolutely amazing. Patricia, talk to us. What are the chak chakras exactly? 
the chakras are the energy centers that we all have in our bodies, and there are seven. I can show a graphic if you want, and I can Absolutely. explain them uh, quickly. So Absolutely. Find, uh... <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Do you see uh, the chakras here? Yes. Okay. So the chakra system in the body, we have seven main energy centers, and they all are related to vibrations, to colors, and to uh, behavior properties. And at large, uh, we have the root chakra that is uh, color red and associated with earth energy. Uh, it's uh, a chakra that grounds us to the earth, that uh, grounds us emotionally, energetically. It brings balance, in, it brings security. And uh, everybody can experience that at the physical level. Then there is the sacral chakra that is associated with water and orange color. And that one brings um, <clears throat> a sense of fluidity, creativity, creation, it's also the chakra where we let go. Like when we go to the washroom, you know, we release uh, fluids. It, this is where we release emotions. And there's a lot of feelings felt at that level. Uh, sexuality, sexual energy as well. Then we move to the solar plexus. Uh, it's solar energy, yellow color. It's associated with fire, with light, uh, with uh, the sun. And this is where the ego uh, it is said the willpower. This is where we find the gut feeling. You know, when you say have that gut feeling to take action, you're in movement, you are radiant. And somebody who has a solar plexus that is weaker will feel a, a slouching down. There's no force on the solar plexus. They will be shy, they'll be fearful. Uh, you know, you will hide with your hands, your solar plexus. So that energy is very powerful. And, and, and those three chakras are at the physical level everybody can detect them and understand them because they're part of the body the fourth chakra which is the one exactly in the in the middle of the system is the heart chakra and it's associated with air with wind uh, the lungs you know the breath and the colors as associated with them with, with the heart is the green color and also the pink color they vibrate at the same level, the same frequency. And the heart serves as the regulator of the physical chakras with the more uh, mental and uh, spiritual chakras. We move then to the throat, the one we worked with today uh, that I, I helped you heal, uh, Rob, earlier. The throat is uh, color blue and it's associated with sound and silence. It's where communication happens, uh, where your authentic self speaks out. Uh, this is where you will express yourself. So it's perfect for people who are uh, public speakers, artists. Uh, you voice your identity through the throat. And you communicate. And that's why we say we have one mouth and two ears. Use them accordingly. Uh, we move on then to the third eye, which is the pineal gland, uh, indigo color. It's the uh, chakra of the intuition, of uh, the inner intelligence, where you visualize your imagination. This is where solutions come, intelligence, memory, uh, logic. Uh, it, it's inside the brain, but it's separate from the brain, which is more Cartesian. And this is the little voice, the soft little voice that will bring you in your guidance, but that most people don't listen to, or they just push away because it's so subtle, you know, because the mental noise is louder and it's tricking us. Um, and, and then there is uh, the seventh chakra, the crown, it's a purple color, and it's the one of... Uh, consciousness it's uh, detached from the body so it's where the spirit where uh 
you know, the quantum field, the, we access uh, the united field of intelligence of uh, the universe or God or the spirit, uh, all, all that uh, wisdom that exists outside of herself that is also guiding us. And once uh, performers, artists, storytellers, or anyone can align and cooperate with all of these uh, energy centers, this is when you become unlimited, you become expanded, uh, you become more aware of the possibilities around you and more successful in general, um, more gracious and also happier because you have control of your own outcome, your of, of the plans, goals, intentions, objectives that you have. Patricia, my God, time is flying by. I, oh, wow. It's, we have so much more stuff to cover. Uh, that's one thing I do want to talk about. It, you, you're telling me like in the best of times when we're not in COVID, um, when you're giving uh, your classes, there are five rules when the people come into your class. Can you talk to us about that? There's three rules, actually. Ah, three. three okay, rules. sorry. Um, so there are th uh, three agreements that all my students have to accept. And uh, those who, uh, uh, if you're, you have come to my uh, workshops, you already know them. So for, if you haven't, here they are. Um, when I do the physical in-person workshops, uh, we do it usually in a beautiful yoga room. And uh, there's a door that I will open and I will tell the students, you have to agree to these three principles of chi energy. The first one being be open-minded. Because if you are, if there's a closed mind or resistance, uh, you're not going to get the benefits from the method. And most people agree. Actually, I have never had one single person disagree with any of these principles. The second principle is have no expectations. Because when we have expectations and you don't meet them, you are just uh, in a tunnel vision of uh, outcome and you might get a better outcome, but you will be disappointed if you don't get exactly what you want when there are so many other possibilities out there. So have no ex expectations. And the third one, the most important one to me is have no judgment no judgment for the method, for the workshop, for the other participants, and especially for yourself, because judgment really restricts us in any situation. And once everybody uh, agrees to the those terms, the door opens and I tell them, go find a blanket. Uh, there's a, a the exact number of blankets or yoga mats on the floor already there, randomly placed. Um, and I tell them, go find your blanket and relax. And you will know which one it is energetically. And then the door closes and we start the class. And the same happens on Zoom. I had to adapt that uh, those three principles to a Zoom uh, room. And it works digitally as well because um, energy transcends. Okay, so whether you're there live or not, uh, you can actually emit your thoughts because it, all it is is energy. It and, is. and like you could be like uh, miles away. We're on like uh, this platform is StreamYard. We could be on Zoom or whatever. And just by being here presently through these cameras, we, you could actually emit some kind of a communication going back and forth. Absolutely. And that's how when you watch a movie that was made uh, 30 years ago, you can cry and you feel emotional or you, you're fearful if you're watching a horror movie. Energy transcends through space and time. So um, it, it's so powerful. When you learn it as a storyteller, as a performer, it will completely transform your life for the better. Okay, and uh, you are also saying that uh, we uh, each human being has the capability of seeing another person's aura Absolutely. or auras. How many layers of auras are there? Uh, depending on uh, the person, it, it, there's it's unlimited. Uh, auras, everybody 
emits different uh, frequencies and uh, it's like it's like a magnetic field around us so depending on if we are contracted retracted expanded if we're healthy if we are aligned uh, we emit different auras okay and of course uh, there's a different color to the aura and also not only is there a different color but there's also a different intensity that goes with each of the colors Yes, uh, and uh, I mean, it, you have to learn first the basis of uh, chakra energy to be able to expand yourself to the point where you perceive auras. Uh, but everybody can learn, and um, you know, it's something very easy to to learn. You can learn it within a few minutes if you're open. You have no expectations no judgment and you're open-minded about it you will learn it for sure does all of this reiki uh the auras um chi is all this like intertwined with the law of attraction does everything like fit in together uh, the law of attraction is what uh, they are calling how to apply those laws of nature and in a certain combination so yes uh, everything is related to energy and the law of attraction is pure consciousness pu pure energy in motion in, in in activation in application i would say okay and as uh, my god really we're, cl uh, we're drawing uh, close to the close of the show and guys thank you so much for your wonderful participation to each and every one of you um along with Patricia, you made the show absolutely beautiful. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for tuning in. Patricia, what advice would you have for someone who's in the film business, having a hard time, struggling, and who's having doubts? What advice do you have for that person? I would uh, understand where the doubts come from because the doubts come from a lack of information or a misalignment with your goals and intentions. And a, a lot of people feel the doubts because they are staying within their ego. So if the ego is not fulfilled or satisfied, if the ego is not fed, they feel disappointed, frustrated, resentful, and it just creates chaos in your life. So just become aware that you are not your ego, but you can use it for transcending to a, an active mode of service. I, I would recommend be, become somebody who is there to serve rather than, than to receive. Become a giver so the karma will bring it back even more to you. And uh, anything you do, anything you, you collaborate, on anything you you touch you create has to serve two people or more outside of yourself and once you understand that everything will start falling into place it did for me it, it has done for many people because it's not if you stay just about you you will it, it it's um you're not collaborating with all the possibilities out there Okay, and uh, so tell me, Patricia, you're uh, you're into film right now. Um, what are your plans for the future? You, you have like besides film, uh, maybe theater coming up or anything else like musicals. Uh, I love uh, the format of uh, having something that I don't have to reproduce with my body. <laughs> theater is limiting for me because I will have to be there every night. And it's not something that appeals to me. I love the, the visual form. I love uh, playing with sound and with uh, different technologies. So filmmaking is really what is my, my specialty. So I have, I'm preparing a, a TV show right now, uh, a TV series that I got funding uh, to write the pilot episode with a, a Canadian broadcaster. So I'm working on that after uh, Montreal Girls uh, post-production ends. And I have so many other projects. I have a short uh, playing tomorrow, actually, uh, on uh, lashortsfest.com. And it's uh, a contender for an academy qualification for the Oscars. So ha having been attached as one of the producers of uh, Tribes, it is called. 
uh, with an American team. Uh, we shot it in LA. It was uh, just uh, wonderful. Just go moving forward, helping other filmmakers with their projects as well. So Patricia, you got your book. Uh, tell us a little bit about your book. What's it called, first of all? Uh, the book is called Empathy is Bullshit. And I really mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I really mean it. Uh, and I explain it in the book why I, I believe empathy is bullshit. And uh, I think empathy is great for actors. It's great for human beings to connect, but it's a transitional phase. Don't stay in the empathy level because you will be miserable. You will suffer. Uh, you have to transcend it to compassion. And compassion is that you acknowledge the suffering of others, but you're not suffering with them. You're helping them because you are in a place of empowerment, in a place of power, of uh, control of your own emotional self. So being an empath has uh, been a, a struggle and a journey of mine uh, that I had to learn to transcend to the compassion phase. So Patricia, what do you consider would be your favorite movies or TV shows? What do you relate to the most? I love films that make me think, reflect, that challenges my beliefs, that make me learn something and feel inspired to carry on with my own intentions, my own life and change the world. Okay, is there any film in particular that you would like to name? Uh, <laughs> I, I like films that are very sensual. Uh, I have a, a, an attraction for sexual matter in my films. Uh, the, the search of identity, the search of uh, self-expression. Uh, one of my favorite films of all time is by Alfonso Cuaron, Oscar uh, winning uh, director from Mexico. And it's called Y tu mama también, and your mother too. Uh, I, I just watch this film every time and I love it so much. Um, I love, uh, I mean, there are so many, uh, but it's not cinema that really inspires me as a storyteller. It's nature. It's trees. Actually, I get my inspiration from trees, strangely enough. <laughs> uh, so um, once again, I'm going to put up the uh, workshop over here where uh, actually the website where uh, you folks can go. You can uh, see what's going on with Patricia. Uh, you guys can sign up for our classes. And Patricia, we're saying your classes are quite affordable, uh, contrary to what some people might believe. Uh, they are quite affordable for the value that they bring. Uh, for me, it's uh, years of research and training, and I have invested tens of thousands of U.S. dollars in my own education. So what I, I charge is to uh, a validation of everything that I have learned, process, accumulated, restructured, and put in a combination that serves the film and entertainment industry. Uh, they are quite affordable, and I always, I'm always open to uh, discuss with the students about how can I help them, uh, even if they don't have the budget, to uh, come to the work. But they're honestly, if you compare it to American prices, they're very affordable. Patricia, it has been, uh, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show, but it has been absolutely delightful having you on. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And we do want to have you on again at some other time. I would love to come back. So, yeah, Patricia, we'd love to have you back. Thank you again. Okay, so... Okay, so stand by. We're going to come and get you at uh, as we close the show. It won't be long. Thank you. Stand by. <laughs> In. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in with Patricia. Bye. Well, there you have it, folks. That was Patricia Chica, an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and a Chi energy educator. She was a guest tonight. Uh, again, thank you to all for uh, tuning in. It was absolutely amazing. Next week, we're going to have our guest, uh, Mr. Alexander Richard Strauss Fausto. So you don't want to miss that show either. Tomorrow, guys. Uh, tune in at 5.30, both on Facebook and on Bobby Short Shorts. We're releasing the fifth episode of Daily Struggles. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We bid you farewell. Have a beautiful and blessed week. We'll see you next week. Same time, same reason. Ciao.